Hey guys, Trouble1701 here, and today we're going to be looking at something I got as a piece of fan mail. Uh, this came in that really big box from Steven, which I really appreciate, Steven. I don't know if, what name you go by in the comments, but I do wish you'd let me know so I could thank you properly there. Uh, but we're going to be looking at this, and this looks like a children's story, like something you would read to a small child to maybe help them go to sleep at night. And oddly enough, of all the stuff to come out of the box, this is the first thing I've read. I don't know why. I guess cause also because it's small, I could read through it quickly. And I was simply curious because I'd never seen like a Doctor Who children's novel, something to get a young child interested in the TARDIS, especially with the 13th Doctor being a female, maybe a young girl interested in Doctor Who. Because Doctor Who is very much one of those shows that it has so many different generations that have fallen in love with it. And so many different generations have discovered it at different eras of the show's history, or they've discovered different eras of the show. So it's nice that you have people who have discovered Doctor Who when it originally began in 63, people who discovered it with the relaunch in 2005, people who picked up during the Tom Baker years, the Pertwee years, or maybe in the 80s they stumbled onto the Colin Baker era or McCoy era. Uh, or maybe like me here in the U.S., you know, it was reruns of all sorts of different doctors, especially Tom Baker, but all uh, just a plethora of different doctors. I caught on really quick to regeneration and all that from seeing all the different doctors and reruns. Um, or even in the modern series, maybe you didn't start with Eccleston. Maybe your first doctor was Tennant or Capaldi or even Whitaker. I, I like a show like that can, that can appeal to so many different generations and people. Um, and so I love the idea of a child story. Like, like if I had a little girl, I would definitely read her... I would read this to her at night to help her go to sleep at night. I could see nerdy me with my Doctor Who fandom wanting to read this to my daughter if I had a daughter. Uh, so we're going to read through it today, actually. I really like the art, by the way, too. It, it's, it's very nice art. Plus, I've learned I tend to like the 13th Doctor more when Whitaker isn't playing her. Like, my thir my favorite 13th story is still Stephen Moffat's short story, Terror of the Umpity Ums. I just feel like the, thir the Stephen Moffat writes the 13th Doctor better than Chibnall does, which is odd when you think about it, but true. So we're going to read through this. It's a short little story, but I really enjoyed it, and I really found myself liking the art. It was Lizzie's first day at her new school. She didn't say, or she didn't know any of the other kids, so at lunchtime she sat by herself. When Lizzie came home, she made a dozen peanut butter sandwiches and stuffed them in her backpack. I hate my new school, she said to her parents. I don't have any friends there. I'm running away to be with my old friends. Lizzie marched into the woods behind her house. She wondered how she'd find her way back to her old neighborhood. Then she saw something strange in the distance. It looked like a big blue box. What could it be? Lizzie pushed the door open and peered inside. Look at that inquisitive look there. I love that. The box was bigger on the inside. That is a nice art shot. Though that does look more like Tenet's console to me. That is a beautiful art shot. I really like that. In the center of the room was a control panel covered in buttons and levers and dials. Lizzie stood on her tiptoes and looked at the controls and dropped her sandwich down into a slot. Oops. Suddenly, the door swung open with a crash. Lizzie curled up under the control panel to hide. Lizzie saw a woman wearing a long coat stride into the room. She pressed a button, pulled a lever, spun a dial. A strange sound filled the air. Woof, woof, woof. Suddenly, the floor shook. Red lights flashed, an alarm blared, and Lizzie rolled out from underneath the control panel. What happened to you? Or what happened to the TARDIS, and who are you? Who are you? I'm the doctor. Doctor Who? Just the Doctor? That's a nice little shot right there, too. The Doctor opened the TARDIS door, and Lizzie saw they were in outer space. The TARDIS is malfunctioning. I meant to go to Silfrax Galaxy, not the Brohaha 995 Galaxy. <laughs> is this a spaceship? Of course not. It's a time and spaceship. If this is a spaceship, does that mean you're an alien? Indeed I am. But you look like a human. Maybe you look like a Time Lord. Did you by any chance get peanut butter into the console? I did. I'm sorry. 
My sonic screwdriver is useless on peanut butter, and I've lost my toolbox. We'll have to travel using the random generator button. How fun. Sounds like a thing the doctor would say. How fun. The doctor pressed a big red button, and when she opened the door again, they were in the middle of a field full of dinosaurs. Brilliant, said the doctor. Get us out of here, said Lizzie. Some nice artwork there. The doctor pressed the button again. This time, when she opened the door, they were in Egypt. Lizzie recognized the pyramids and the great sphinx from her history books. Very nice. Next, the TARDIS traveled to a coral reef in the tropical ocean. Lizzie counted the fish as they swam past the window. She had never seen so many different kinds. I really love the artwork in this. Really nice. Finally, the TARDIS landed on the surface of an alien planet. Brilliant, said the doctor. This is the planet Plort. The Glorps are fantastic engineers. They'll be able to help us fix the TARDIS. The Glorps. The doctor and the Glorps got to work. The Glorps brought their tools into the TARDIS, and the air rang with the sounds of sawing, hammering, and drilling. Lizzie and the smallest alien, Blorp, watched them work. No, that won't work at all. This thing just won't come off. Can you hand me one of those little wibbly-wobbly bits? Something in your bag smells delicious, said Blorp. I pack sandwiches, said Lizzie. Want one? This is the best thing I've ever tasted, said Blorp. Suddenly, everyone stopped working. Something was wrong. We need to reverse the polarity of the time configurator, said the doctor, and I can't do that without a neutron flow converter. I love that. We have to, we'll have to go halfway across the galaxy to find one. But Lizzie had an, has a, can't talk today. Lizzie had an idea. I know how to fix the TARDIS. Lizzie held Blorp over the control panel. Blorp was the only one small enough to squeeze into the slot. Blorp followed the smell to the sandwich and ate it in two giant bites. Blorp, look at that smile. Look at that smile. He's happy to get that sandwich. The doctor pressed a button, pulled a lever, and spun a dial. A strange sound filled the air. Whoosh, whoosh. Oof. No alarms blared. No red lights flashed. Brilliant, said the doctor. You fixed the TARDIS. It was time for Lizzie to go home, and everyone hugged goodbye. Goodbye, Blorp. Goodbye, Lizzie. I wish I could go to Earth with you. Lizzie was sad to be leaving the doctor and Glorp behind. You know, Lizzie, said the doctor. I travel through space and time helping people, so I have to say goodbye to old friends all the time. I know it's hard to start over. Do you ever get lonely, Lizzie asked. Everyone gets lonely sometimes, said the doctor, but I make new friends wherever I go. And I never forget the old ones. Goodbye, doctor. Goodbye, Lizzie. When the doctor opened the TARDIS doors, Lizzie was amazed to find that no time had passed. She ran home as quickly as she could. And you can see Yaz and Ryan and... Um, my brain went blank. But you can see all three of her Series 11 and 12 companions right here. Bradley Walsh's character. Right there. We thought you were running away, said Lizzie's mother. I did run away, said Lizzie, and I made friends with a doctor and Glort from the planet Plorp. I guess making human friends at my new school won't be so hard after all. Lizzie ran up to her bedroom and unzipped her backpack, and inside was one last peanut butter sandwich and Blorp. They split the sandwich and had the best sleepover ever. And of course the final shot with the doctor waving goodbye to them from at their window. That's a nice little short story. Again, you know, I think um, if you have children, that'd be a great one for small children. I really liked it. I don't know. I just enjoyed reading it. I could see myself reading this. Like if I was ever babysitting any of my best friend's kids when they were younger, I could see myself reading this to them. So that's really nice. I like that. I like the art. I enjoy the story. It's just a nice little short story. It's nice that Doctor Who can appeal to so many different generations and that it has an era for everybody. There's an era of Doctor Who that is always going to be your favorite. It might not be everyone else's favorite, but it's your favorite for whatever reason. Maybe it's the one you watched first, or maybe it's just the one you clicked with that particular Doctor or companion, or villain, or stories, or writing. Uh, but everybody has their favorite era. And um, that's a good thing to always stand by. So, 
If you have liked this video, I would like to ask that you go ahead and click that subscribe button. I'm constantly trying to grow the channel um, to 1,000 subscribers. That is my goal at the moment. Uh, I also have a Patreon if you'd like to support me that way. There's a link to that down in the description below. I have a P.O. box uh, if you would like to send me anything. This was actually sent to me by one of my subscribers, Stephen. I really appreciate that. Uh, so that's down there. A link to my Amazon wish list and my Amazon UK wish list. Both of those are down there as well. Most importantly, though, thank you for watching.